The scripture for the service is Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Senior pastor will now deliver a lecture on Genesis, Enoch, part, part 1. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and members around the world, and the local sanctuary members, and branches members around the world, who are attending this service through the internet and on GCN. Let me talk about Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam. The record about Enoch in the Bible is short, but its lesson is so great. The first is that Enoch lived the life of walking with God even on this earth, and the second is that he was taken up alive. Only a few were recorded about Enoch. God walked with him for 300 years. There is no such person in the Bible with others. But God walked with Enoch, and he was uh, taken up alive without seeing death. It's a very uh, unique record, and it's very rare in the Bible. Only these two facts are enough to explain how great the forefather of faith, Enoch, was. Just as 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is inspired. Inspired by God. Now, when God inspired the recorders of the Bible, He emphasized the different aspects of the forefathers of faith. For example, he put the stress on faith when talking about Abraham. For Moses, it was about the life of the leader recognized by God. God emphasized the up, uncompromising faith of Daniel and how David became a beautiful vessel after he passed the refinements with his love for God. Through Elijah, Apostle Paul, and other forefathers, God explains how they understood the heart of God the Father and how much they loved God. Now, what is it that God wants us to learn from Enoch? It is the fact that God truly loves one who is of goodness without evil and that God wants to have him close to him. Let me say it again. It is the fact that God truly loves one who is of goodness without evil, and that God wants to have him close to him. He wants to have him close to him. The Bible says Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years. And then it says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. By his time, the average life of a man was over 900 years. Therefore, Enoch lived only for one-third of the lifespan of those of that period of time. As I said before, God took him when he was young. Because God loved him so much, He wanted him to be with him and beside, so God took him earlier. If we convert Enoch's age, uh, 365 at that time, it's the time of young adult in this age. Without seeing death, Enoch was taken up to heaven alive. Hebrews 11.5 says, By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death, and he was not found because God took him up. By faith, Enoch was taken up. It's the same 
For those who have faith these days, people with faith never commit sin. They really don't like sin and evil. They don't do unless it's goodness, just as said in the Word. If anyone slaps them on the right cheek, even due to you know, false accusation, they rather turn the other to make peace with the counterparty. They don't sue or argue, saying, Why are you doing this to me? Or something like that. They have goodness in their heart. So they want to forgive them, even though they are blamed for others' faults. How pleased God would be to see this kind of heart of good. But the world of flesh isn't like that today. Or let people rather regard those as cowards, saying, you don't have any righteousness or pride. But that's not what God wants. They get slapped and give things away to others, not because they don't have pride, but because they have goodness. For he obtained the witness that before he is being taken up, he was pleasing to God. He was pleasing to God. That's faith. Only by faith you can please God. If you have faith, you don't do evil. In any given situation, even though even you are wrongfully accused, you don't try to do anything harm to others. Can you understand? Well, it's hard to understand. You may say, how do you live like that? But once you come into spirit, then you may understand a little bit. Once you come into whole spirit, then you can 100%, 100%. If you fill up the 100% of whole spirit, then you can perfectly understand it. Uh -huh. Even though the shepherd was wrongfully accused and misunderstood, but he didn't complain against God anything at all. He rather said, Father, please save them. Let them be saved. Let them not go to hell. He could pray like that. You can understand that once you come into whole spirit and fill up the 100% uh, of one whole spirit. As said, Enoch obtained the witness that he was pleasing to God while he was living on this earth. And so, he could walk with God even on this earth. First, let's see what it means to walk with God. Walking with someone is accompanying someone. Accompanying someone. What does it mean exactly that God walked with Enoch? Does it mean that God himself came down to this earth, stayed with Enoch, so taking Enoch's hand and having chit-chatted with him while walking? Of course not. It means God always communicated with Enoch while he himself guided Enoch's life. God always communicated with Enoch. If you come into the whole spirit, you can always communicate with God as well. God is concerned in every single thing in your life. Because He loves you so much. As God communicated with Enoch and guided his life, I mean, your life can be led by God, not by yourself. Everything is, you know, it's higher than everything being prosperous. During this time, God taught Enoch much spiritual knowledge. He vividly revealed the facts about God the Trinity, about the providence of human cultivation, and about the secrets of spiritual realm in heaven. He also told him about the future. For example, in Jude chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, Enoch prophesies about the things that will take place at the end of human cultivation. He says, 
He was also about these men that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds which they have done in an ungodly way. Can you understand? There is so much in detail. All the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way. So much in detail. So God hates any kind of unrighteousness and any kind of evil. And listen, okay? All the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, there are so many of them, right? And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, when the Lord comes back in the air, He comes with those you know, who are staying in uh, paradise. And those ungodly people on this earth, they become the chaff and fall down to the earth, fall into the seven-year tribulation because they are chaff. The Lord comes back to gather only the grain, good grains. So you got to leave as a grain. You heard and you learned how to live a good Christian life. Farmers do farm and they divide good grains from the chaff and burn all the chaff because it's used, they are useless. Our Lord comes back to take only the good grains. So you should be the good grains until then. That's why I emphasize on your good Christian life so much. By the time Enoch already knew that the Lord would come in the air on the last day of the world. While you know, Enoch communicated with God for 300 years, wouldn't God have let him know anything? Enoch could learn this fact as he communicated with God, clearly with God, as he walked with God. If I had not communicated with God, how could I have written the books about heaven and hell? Listen to those who say you know, they've been to hell or heaven. They're, what they're saying is identical to my you know, books. And what my, my books are all complied to the Bible. Besides, Enoch could see the image of God from time to time. This fact implies two things. First, just as when Adam, I mean, just as when God came to Adam when he lived in the Garden of Eden, God would also come to Enoch as a separated spirit. God inspired the heart of Enoch so that he could feel as if God were with him. And God explained specifically to Enoch about God's image that he never talked about to anyone. God revealed everything about himself so that Enoch could even draw the image of God only if had wanted to. The fact Enoch saw the image of God implies, secondly, that he could see the original image of God like Moses. 
In Exodus 33.18 and on words is recorded God's explanation about how He would reveal Himself to Moses. In, El in Exodus 33.18, Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. Moses said to God, show me your glory. Can God show this glory to anybody? He was, Moses was confident to ask God like this, and God accepted his request. He was a man of God. Moses was of goodness. Man of goodness the Father God was looking for. You learn the four levels of goodness. And God is looking for the fourth level of goodness. If you read Numbers chapter 12, you can see why God was with Moses. He was more humble than anyone on the face of the earth. He was humble. He was more humble than anyone else on this earth. I pray you show me your glory. Then God replied, Exodus 33 verses 20 to 23 says, But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. When people see the face of God, they die. Some say, you know, I'll believe when God shows himself to me. No way. He would die right away. Sinner cannot see God. Even a little bit. You cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock, and it will come about while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. You shall see my back. Though Moses too communicated clearly with God, he couldn't see God's face directly, but only his back. This took place before two years had passed after the Exodus. That is, it was before Moses became complete. As Moses stayed in the wilderness for 40 years, he became more humble and faithful. He has led you know, many, I mean, he led millions of people. He could understand more of the depth of God the Father's heart and completely resemble him. What was he like physically after he finished all his duty and ended his life at the age of 120? He was acclaimed that Deuteronomy 34.10 says, Since that time no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. Compared to when Moses had just got out of Egypt, he changed a lot more perfectly after uh, 40 years of living in the wilderness. This is why we can see a difference. First, Moses could see uh, only God's back. But after 40 years, he became more gentle, good, humble, resembling God. Like this Moses, Enoch was also able to see God face to face. Of course, he couldn't see the face of God from the beginning. As he walked with God for many more years than Moses, he could gradually become closer and closer to God. Only after he was close enough to God did God show his face to Enoch. By the way, the difference of emotion between when Enoch saw God like this and when he was in the bosom of God as he was taken alive was so great. 
It will be the same for us. We can greatly feel the love of God the Father in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit on this earth. But how great will our emotion be when we directly see the Father in heaven? Regarding this, the First Corinthians thir thirteen twelve says, "For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face." Dim as in a mirror. When you look at a mirror, does it look dim? No, you can clearly see your face. But it said, we see in a mirror dimly. It's because mirrors 2,000 years ago were not as clear as the ones these days. There are mirrors made of, you know, uh, rock. So it's not as clear as of today's mirrors. So that's why it is dim. Now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. If you go to the dwelling place in the third heavenly kingdom or higher, you can directly see the faces of God the Father and of the Lord. Revelation 21 verses 3 and 4 also says that God will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You can see the face of God the Father, however, only in a condition if you become a true child that is sanctified and pure in heart. So you got a pure in heart. You have to come into spirit and whole spirit. Otherwise, even if you are saved, you may go to paradise or the first or second heavenly kingdom. Those who receive shameful salvation will go to a paradise. Or if you're better than that, then you will go to a first heavenly kingdom or second heavenly kingdom. You didn't cast off whole flesh. You have traits of sinful desires, sinful nature. You didn't cast them off. To the extent you cast off them, according to the measure of your faith, you go to different places in heaven. If you cast them off all, all the evil, then you go to the third heavenly kingdom. If you are spotless, pure in heart, after you enter the whole spirit, then you will go to New Jerusalem. You can see the face of God the Father, however, only in a condition if you become a true child that is sanctified. In Hebrews, we are told to pursue peace and holiness with everyone. Otherwise, we cannot see the Lord. We will not see the Lord as well as on this earth because we are not holy. Even though people are evil, we got to pursue peace with them. I mean, is there anybody who cannot make peace, make, who cannot make peace with me? No matter what you think, I have to love you. I never hated you. I don't have a such a thing. I love you all. Even though you wrongfully accuse me, you make rumors about me, I don't hate you. I cannot hate you. And holiness. You can see the face of God the Father. You have to make peace with everybody. You know, those who wrongfully accuse you, those who hate you, you would not hate, hate them. And you can make peace with them. What about holiness? Let me tell you this. You know, you should not, you know, watch you know those lewd you know, things. If you want to be holy, then you should not watch them. So you got to be pure in the heart. If you are pure in heart, you will not judge, you will not condemn anyone. Especially you are a man of God. 
So you can see the face of God the Father. In addition, those who pursue peace with all men can see the Lord. Enoch was more than qualified enough for these conditions, so he could walk with God on this earth and see the image of God from time to time. Your brothers and sisters, how does God walk with us in these New Testament days, the age of the Holy Spirit? Among the triune God, He can walk with us as a separated spirit of the Holy Spirit or of the Lord. In John 14, 17, the Lord said, He, the Holy Spirit, abides with you. The Holy Spirit abides in us, not separately. The Holy Spirit has come into our hearts and stays there just as in a temple. So we shouldn't get our heart profaned. Christians' hearts are temples where the Holy Spirit abides. So our hearts should not be defiled. We should purify our hearts. If we do, so will our ideas and thoughts. No bad or defiling thoughts can come into your mind. You cannot condemn, you cannot judge others. If, if you sanctify your heart, ideas of good come into your mind. If we have gentle and good hearts, we think with gentleness and goodness. We should be like this. How wrong it is for Christians to have filthy ideas in their hearts and to condemn and judge. Ways of you know, believing life were taught many times at this church, but there were some who didn't obey. So the Lord says, the Holy Spirit abides with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Holy Spirit abides with us, and He is also in us. Mark 16, 20 says, And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them, and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. His disciples you know, preached the gospel and they manifested signs and the Lord worked with them. The Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. He confirmed the word is true. That is the word of God. It means the Spirit of the Lord was with His disciples when Likewise, when the Lord is with you, the signs truly follow. And he is with those who try to, by every means possible, to live by the word, even if they have untruth in their hearts. Though they haven't thrown all sin away, yet, if they try and are on their way to get there, the Lord stays with them. But if they keep committing sin, and although they know it is sin, the Lord doesn't stay with them. God turns his face away from them. He will say, you are not my son or daughter, you are illegitimate. The Lord also provides God's children with grace and love. However, He cannot be with those who willingly violate the will of God and commit sin even though they know the will of God. When they leave the light and stay in the darkness and go against the truth by sinning, God cannot be with them. Neither can our Lord because He is the one who is holy and perfect. It's because it's the work that belongs to darkness. God is light and the Lord is also light. Darkness and light cannot coexist.
you know, when all the lights here, you know, go off, it will be dark here. Since the lights are on, darkness went away. The stronger the light is, the, bri the brighter it will be. They cannot coexist. Only when they cast off the work of darkness and come into light can they be with God who is light. If you don't, if you commit sin, if you don't live by the word of God, God cannot be with you. When you pray, you gotta discern well. Especially when you give representative prayer. I mean, when you go, when you visit a member, or when you give counseling, you gotta use expression this this expression well. Even to the one who doesn't live by the word of God, who lives in the light. But if you say, God is with you, you cannot say that. God surely is not with him. You got to teach him why God is not with him. But if you say, God is with you, even though he commits sin, leading to death, God is love, you say, you cannot lie. You cannot pray lie. You cannot change that person. You got to teach him right. And when they cast off sin and completely become sanctified, they can walk with God from then on. Those who walk with God have perfectly thrown away all the sin. They don't have any form of evil at all. They live by the whole word and the commandments of God and they stay in the light. When they have become sanctified by doing so, the Lord can walk with them. There is difference depending on how deep they come into spirit. But they will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, they will receive His inspiration, and they can always live in His guidance. Therefore, they can enjoy the blessing of prosperity in all things. Not only can the evil one not touch them, but no diseases or germs can come close to them either. Since they are protected by God, they don't get sick. If they get sick or don't get protected for minor things, which could happen, which could happen, then they look back on themselves right away and repent. And then they recover very soon after a prayer. It doesn't take long because it didn't come from sin. Since they, the, the true children of God, who are in the spirit, since they don't come in sin, the enemy devil and Satan cannot bring trials or afflictions on them. Even if they face a trial, they will overcome it by faith and give glory to God. The deeper they come into spirit, the greater their blessing of prosperity. When they come into whole spirit, they will receive a whole different level of blessing and reveal the great glory of God. Therefore, I pray in the name of the Lord that you may quickly come into spirit and whole spirit and live a life walking with the Lord. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, Enoch wasn't qualified to walk with God from the very beginning. He also went through the steps of cultivation like others. You must understand that he also received the refinements to pull out the sinful tributes from his nature. Let me explain how, let me explain two things at this point about how Enoch was able to come into spirit and whole spirit. First of all, Enoch enjoyed storing up goodness. Enoch had many brothers. Genesis 5.19 says, Jared lived 800 years after he became the father of Enoch, and he had other sons and daughters. When Enoch grew up with many other brothers, he didn't have any conflicts with anyone because he always yielded to his brothers. He didn't try to take something more for himself. He didn't try to be acknowledged or to be loved more than others. Those who have this kind of desire, even a little bit, cannot reach the perfect goodness. Enoch was only faithful to his given jobs. 
He did his best without wanting to get compliment. Since he didn't try to be loved more by his parents, when he saw his brothers loved, he had no negative feeling about it. Instead, he rejoiced. He neither kept other brothers in check to be acknowledged better than them. Isn't it evil? He got nothing like that. Since he didn't have greed or selfish motives, he made peace with all men. That's why he was qualified to see the Lord God. Hebrews 12.14 says, Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification. It says, Pursue, that's a commandment. Pursue peace with all men and sanctification, without which no one will see the Lord. No one will see the Lord. Enoch always obeyed his parents in the truth, not to mention the word of God. He had no intention to disobey his parents when they told him anything. In this way, Enoch enjoyed following goodness, doing goodness, and storing up goodness. He enjoyed storing up goodness. He was happy to do so. Aren't you also happy to practice goodness? Although you are in a financially difficult situation, you feel happy and peaceful when you help those in need. The men of flesh regret it later. They think, I'm in a difficult situation now. I shouldn't have helped him. They give alms only when someone sees them. As a result, Enoch could walk with God from the time he was 65. Brothers and sisters, it is true that Enoch was born with the heart of more goodness than others. Even so, if Enoch had not stored the goodness, he couldn't have been qualified to walk with God. Indeed, Enoch diligently followed goodness more than any others. The measure of goodness that people are born with in their heart is all different. Under the same parents, all children are different with their measure of goodness. There are good, there are bad. Those who are good, you know, when their mother breastfeed, you know, other neighboring in a kid, that child is not jealous of that neighboring kid. But evil child. If his mother breastfeed another child, he, he tries to push the baby out and he hits on his mother and he cries. But a good child don't do that. He tries to share, he tries to give, so he does not get jealousy. From the early age, the goodness appears. Moreover, chances are that some may be in an environment where they receive positive impact, but the envir environment may have an evil impact on others. Even based on all these grounds, people have their own free will. They also have the basic cognitive ability to discern good and evil. Therefore, it's up to their free will whether they follow good or evil. Even if they are born with the heart of less goodness, goodness will be stored up in their heart when they follow goodness. On the contrary, even if they are born with the heart of more goodness, evil will be stored in their heart as they follow evil. It is just as the Lord said in Matthew 12, 35, the good man brings out of his good treasure what is good, and evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. Good and evil are not things, but they can surely be stored up. Counting in the spiritual realm is done very strictly. Things are stored up as much as people do. The fact that Eno was able to walk with God when he was 65 means the whole goodness he stored up just reached the full measure. It was the same. When Joseph became the Prime Minister of Egypt at the age of 30, it was the result of diligently storing of goodness for 13 years as a slave and a prisoner. 
By that time, Joseph was in a situation to give out evil better than goodness. He could have blamed on his brothers who sold him as a slave and complained of fate. When he was wrongfully accused and imprisoned, he could have abandoned himself. It's quite obvious that dealing with prisoners is more difficult than with the normal population. There are people like, you know, those who are full of anger and rage, you know, rich, pierced men, harsh talking men, or offending men. Most of them were political prisoners there. Even in this course in the situation, Joseph stored goodness because he believed in God. So Genesis, 31, uh, Genesis 39 verse 21 says, But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of chief jailer. The Lord was with Joseph. Although he was in the prison, God was with him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. God was concerned in him and even guided the heart of the chief jailer. When Jehovah God was with him and loved him, he even guided the heart of the chief jailer. And so the chief jailer put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. Joseph took care of all the affairs in the prison. Our God gave him a favor and gave grace unto uh, the chief jailer. And the chief jailer didn't interfere at all with whatever Joseph did. It was because the jailer felt that God was with Joseph. God made whatever Joseph did prosperous. Even though Joseph was in a prison and he dealt with prisoners, he diligently continued to store the up goodness. Finally, when the goodness of Joseph went beyond the justice, God worked in the dream of the Pharaoh of Egypt. As its result, Joseph became the prime minister and acquired the authority second to the king. It is just as Galatians 6 9 says, Let us not lose heart in, good, in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. Try doing good, and you will reach a certain level. Then you can receive answers. Some answers seem to come sooner than you think, but others don't. Even so, each of the answers has right timing allowed by God. He answers you when it's best. Therefore, I wish you can defeat the evil with goodness in any given situation. It is said, the good man brings out of his good treasure what is good. Once you defeat evil with goodness, goodness will be stored up to that extent, and the spiritual power will be stronger. It will be easier to defeat the evil next time. If you defeat once, it gets easier and easier, and later on, those things you defeated become like nothing difficult. I hope that you can accomplish goodness and moreover whole goodness that God can acknowledge. Let me conclude this message, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In this lecture, I explain the meaning of Enoch's walking with God, the reason Enoch could come into spirit and whole spirit. The first reason was that he enjoyed the storing of goodness. In the next lecture, I'll explain the second reason and about the situation when he was taken up alive. What did I say is the lesson that God wants to give us through Enoch. It is that God truly loves the ones who are of goodness with no evil, and God wants to have those people close to him. So be like in you know, the good people, then God wants to have you close to Him, and God wants to walk with you, and He will answer your prayers. He wants to bless you. He wants to make you 
prosperous. He can protect you so that the enemy devil and Satan cannot even touch you. Such blessings are waiting for you. But why don't you come close to God? God truly loves the ones who are of goodness with no evil. And God wants to have these people close to Him. Don't you feel good as well when you meet good people better than evil people? But if you are evil, you like evil people. You befriend evil people. But you hate good people. So, birds with a feather gather together. Liars, con artists, they recognize each other and they get close to each other. It happens. Those with you know, selfish greed, you know, they gather together. You know, and they disobey the word of God and they commit sin. Don't you feel good as well when you meet good people, better than evil people? I believe you feel at home when you deal with those in the pure and gentle better than dealing with the confused and stubborn. It's even much more so with God the Father who is holy and who is goodness and love itself. May you possess much more beautiful heart of goodness through this message about Enoch. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, 사랑의 아버지 하나님. 오늘 창세기의 에녹 첫 번째 말씀을 통해서 에녹이 하나님을 얼마나 지극히 사랑하며 사랑이 있기에 제 대자연의 바람 소리에도 하나님의 사랑을 느끼고자 늘 하나님의 사랑을 늘 깨닫고 노력했던 그런 그 마음들을 오늘 말씀을 통해 들을 수가 있었습니다. 우리 모두도 하나님을 지극히 사랑해서 또 온전한 믿음 안에 이르게 도와주시고 오늘 말씀이 생명과 능력되어 또 온전한 믿음을 갖는데 축복의 말씀으로 역사에 주옵소서 감사하며 우리 주 예수 그리스도 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. Let's receive senior pastor's prayer for the sick on screen. Lay your hands on the sick part of your body. If you are not sick, lay your hands on your chest for the desires of your heart. Hallelujah, Almighty Father God of love. Please, lay your hands on all those who are receiving this prayer. Now. By transcending space and time, show your works to your children who are receiving this prayer on the internet and through GCN in brain churches and local sanctuaries around the world. Give them the faith to believe, drive away their negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrail, joints, nerves, tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, Burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and with the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses and infirmities, go away, may the light come. Scorch all the terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit and drive away all endemic diseases such as malaria. All contagious diseases such as cold, flu and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, intestinal, and all other cancers. AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid, heart, lung, women's diseases, and all other inflammations. Be cleansed and go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains go away. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis, be loosened. You get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf come to hear, and the mute come to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents and fix their broken bones. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. 
Restore them from burns and let there be no burning skull left. All kinds of drug addictions, poisoning and substance abuse go away. Let the dead nerves, tissues and cells be regenerated and bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception. May you receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, go away. And their servants also go away. Go away, you evil, unclean, false, and deceitful spirits, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, you go away. May the light come. Father God, give them strength to cry it out in prayer, to cast off sin, and to be sanctified. As their spirit and soul prosper, let all things go well with them, and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week. Bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the firewall of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blessing eyes, protect all your children, their family, workplace, and business. Give our students wisdom and understanding, and give them fervor and passion to study hard. Keep their hearts and minds from the worldly things, and bless our students to love our Father God all the more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or whatever they may do, let them do it all for the glory of Father God. I met God, I experienced God, I received answers and blessings. Bless them to say like this with their lips. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. それは命与える救いの